In this video, I'm going to explain the terms battery and battery cell. And I'm going to also show you how an automotive battery is constructed. We'll take a look at the inside of an automotive battery. So first, we use the term battery to sometimes describe a single cell or multiple cells. In this AA battery right here, we're all familiar with AA or AAA batteries that look like this. This is one single battery cell. And there really is no battery cell that can produce more than about one to two and a half, maybe three volts. That's all. And so we've got a, a cell that's made up of plates and they produce a positive and a negative charge. This cell here has just has plates inside of here that are just wrapped up into a cylinder or a tube and it produces one and a half volts. Now you might say, well, I know a battery that produces more than that. How about this battery? It's a nine volt battery. Well, you might be surprised at how we get to the nine volts. I've got one here that we've taken apart kind of mutilated it so you can see what's inside. And it turns out that when it comes apart, it's made up of six AA sized batteries. So if you pull these out, some of, some of these are coming apart just because they're corroded and, and breaking apart. But they look like a AA battery. They're the size and shape of a AA battery. And so you could guess that this is a one and a half volt cell. So in order to make a nine volt battery, we have six one and a half volt cells wired in series with each other so that the one and a half volts multiplies. One and a half times six equals nine volts. Okay, so here's a car battery, or at least the, the case of a car battery. If we open this up, you'll see that inside, it's got some things in here, but, but inside we have one, two, three, four, five, six individual chambers that are separated by these plastic plates. And as you can guess, that is going to be the six different cells that make this up. So a car battery typically produces 12.6 volts when it's fully charged. And each of these individual cells inside produce 2.1 volts. You multiply that by six and you get 12.6. I'm going to pull this out. These are the plates that are inside of a, a car battery. You'll notice that you've got a positive set of plates and a negative set of plates and they're separated by these separators here. These plates are made of lead, right? So you've got alternating positive and negative plates. They sit down inside of here, and then the cell is filled with an electrolyte. That's the reason why when we check a battery, we take off the caps and we check the water level, we want to see that the water level is high because that's actually the electrolyte. We want it to be above the plates inside of there. If it gets below the plates, then only part of the plates are taking part in the chemical reaction that happens when a battery is discharged and charged. Inside of a battery, let's take a look at these plates. The plates are all made of lead, but when a battery is charged, you have a lead oxide and then a lead plate. So, so the positive and negative plates are lead or lead oxide and they're submerged in the sulfuric acid or in this electrolyte, which, which is H2SO4, which means you've got hydrogen, you've got sulfur, and you've got oxygen in that electrolyte. Now, as the battery discharges, the sulfur leaves the electrolyte and goes and attaches to the positive and negative plates. Eventually, mo both of the positive and negative plates become lead sulfate, and the, the plates are the same. They're now similar metals, and what was the acid or electrolyte is now water. The sulfur has left it, and so all of it's left in the all that's left in there is H2O. That's a discharged battery. Of course, when you recharge it, the opposite happens. The chemical reaction reverses, and the sulfate leaves the plates and returns back into the water, making it sulfuric acid again and making the plates dissimilar. So dissimilar plates in sulfuric acid represent a charged battery, and similar plates in water mean that the battery is discharged, or that cell is discharged. Of course, all, all six of these cells work together, and their voltage combines for the 12.6 volts that we get when a battery is fully charged. Anyway, that's how a, a car battery works. Now that you understand how 
a battery works, you might wonder why does a battery die after time? Why can't we continually discharge and recharge it forever? Well, the answer to that is that the chemical reaction that happens as a battery is charged and then discharged never completely reverses each time, right? So each time it goes through that cycle, it loses a little bit of its capacity. And over time, if a battery is left sitting long enough, in a discharged state, the sulfur on those plates starts to crystallize on those plates, and we call that a sulfated battery, and it never does return back into the electrolyte. Now, this battery here is what's called a deep cycle battery, or sometimes a recombination battery, a gel cell battery, and it's similar. It uses the exact same chemical reaction that the wet cell battery does that we just looked at a minute ago. It has the, the liquid electrolyte. This one just has cells. If you look at them, they're cylinder shaped, so a little bit like the the AA battery we just saw. So the cell, the plates in there are actually coiled up into a cylinder. That allows the cells to be more tightly packed, and the electrolyte is held inside of a gel. So rather than just being a liquid, it's it has a silica in it that makes it a gel. So that's why we call it a gel cell battery, and we call it a recombination battery because. Those, those other batteries, as they, as they charge and discharge, some of the hydrogen gases that are given off come up through the vents and leave the battery. That's the reason you don't want to ever have sparks or flame near the battery because it can cause an explosion. And that's one of the reasons that the battery can't be cycled over and over because the hydrogen that was taking part in that chemical reaction has gone. Some of it leaves each time. In this recombination battery, the hydrogen is captured and is kept there, and it's recombined. That's why it's called a recombination battery. Um, they do, do still sometimes have vents in case of overpressuring, so that we don't have a battery that gets too much pressure in it and explodes or, or has other issues like that. So that's why it's called a deep cycle battery. It can die and be recharged without, without losing its capacity as quickly as the other batteries do. You'll also notice you can see it's just like before. It's got the six cells. Of course, this one is missing one of the cells that's been cut away. It's got the six cells, each cell producing 2.1 volts, just like the other battery. And it otherwise function just like the other battery does. It is, it's a gel cell so that if we tip it over, the liquid electrolyte doesn't pour out like it would if we were to mount a wet cell battery on its side or if it was to tip over sideways. That's a basic introduction to automotive batteries and battery cells.